Good morning, church. Go ahead and stand up on your feet today. Come on, let's get ready to worship. Are you ready to praise? All right, we're going to jump on in. Here we go. Near to the broken hearted keeper of every promise, love that's forever. If you're excited to be in church this morning, let's make some noise. Woo! Come on. Hey, welcome to church. If you've walked in and you're like, what is going on? It is next gen takeover weekend. Hey, come on. Let's make some noise. Come on. We are pumped. We're excited. 
If the lights are in your face a little bit more today than normal weekends, we do apologize. Please send your email to Kyle Riker at OceanChurch.com. <laughs> Hey, we're so glad that you're with us today. My name is Mike. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, amen, we want to welcome you to church. If you're joining us for the first time, there is no better weekend to join us than Next Gen Weekend. And we're so excited for what God's going to do today. Listen, you may be asking, why are we even doing this? Listen, how many of you guys have actually been in one of our kids' spaces? Not many of you. Okay, a few of you. All right. How many of you guys have been in our youth space on Wednesday nights? All right. We got a whole youth section right here. This is awesome. How many of you guys have been in our young adult environment? Listen, God is breathing so much life, not just here on Sunday mornings, but through all the different next-gen ministries that we've got going on. And man, our vision and our mission is to partner with the work of God in people's lives, in kids' lives, in students' lives, in young adults' lives, in families, all the lives that God is bringing to this wonderful house. And man, we get to steward that and partner with that. And so we're so excited to um, showcase that to you tonight tonight, this morning, um, but it's not about us. It's not about us feeling good about ourselves, but it's about God igniting something in you today that says, hey, I've got something to offer today. I've got something to offer in community. I got something to offer maybe with these ministries. So listen, as we go through service today, man, be praying on that, man. Like maybe there's something that God is going to ignite in your heart today. And we want to partner with what God is doing in that. And listen, we've got tons of awesome things planned today. We've got kids that are about to come up and sing here in just a moment. But this summer, everybody say this summer. We got some fun things planned for you and your families. And we're calling it a next gen summer. Take a look at all the things we've got going on. We can feel the temperature on the rise and the days getting longer. Summertime is approaching and it's gonna be a next-gen summer. June 2nd is Family Fun Day. Ocean Church, you are all invited to our Estero campus for some food and fun for the whole family. Best week ever is for kids from four years old all the way through graduating fifth graders. For the first time, both campuses will be hosting Best Week Ever. Best Week Ever is a week full of worship, crafts, games, and a whole lot of Jesus specifically created for your kids. These days are gonna be so special. Jesus has a plan for you being here and he's gonna change your life while you're here. We're filling this summer with ways for you and your family to get connected with Jesus. Don't miss out on the awesome things happening this summer. Man, it's gonna be an incredible summer. And listen, we've got tons planned, and so it's gonna be awesome. Hey, we've got some kiddos in the house. Kids, if you're in the room, say what's up. All right, let's try a different, ready? What's up, brother? Yeah, there it is, all right. Hey, listen, we're about to go back into worship. And listen, if you're a kids person in this room, man, in our kids' environment, we don't just babysit. We worship, man, we praise God together. So if you're a kid, come on up. Come on up to the front. Let's show our parents how we worship. And come on, let's have fun. Let's have the joy of the Lord today. Let's go.
today. We thank you for your presence that overflows in this place. I thank you that we have the opportunity to meet together today and to be in your presence. We don't take it for granted. Thank you, Lord.
let's just receive his grace today. Scripture says he gives fresh mornings every day, fresh mercies every morning. Jesus, we thank you for your mercies. Oh, you never give up on us. Oh, we sing grace upon grace. That's the reason why we gather. That's the reason why we sing Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for who you are, God. We thank you, God, for the work you are doing in your people and in your church. God, we love you. We honor you today. God, we worship you. God, we bring our truest self to you. Lord, the one who's worthy of it all, the name that is above every other name. That's the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on. Hey, there's some awesome people around you. Say hi to some folks and then you could be seated. I'd rather sleep. Got it. Talking about it. And spend my life wondering why. Or if it's you, tell me to come. 
Well, good morning, everybody. We're so glad that you're here. If you if you joined us a little bit late this morning, man, it is Next Gen Takeover weekend, and so we're 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 highlighting all of our Next Gen ministries: our kids ministry, our youth ministry, our young adult ministry. And I'm up on stage with Katya Bogan. Y'all welcome her. <laughs> Katya serves in our kids ministry, our youth ministry, but she's also very much part of our young adult ministry which I've aged out of, so um, glad you get to be part of that. But hey, I wanna welcome those even watching online. We're so glad that you're with us today. And hey, we're gonna take a few moments today to just really talk about what God's doing um, in our youth ministry and our kids' ministries and all the next-gen ministries that are combined. And so Gatia, actually like, when I met Gatia, she, um, it, w it was in a transitional season. Her family had just moved down from Chicago. She was a senior in high school. And we were transitioning um, youth pastors at the time. And uh, man, she was one of the few seniors that made it all the way through. And so, uh, man, that's awesome. And then you went away to college, right? Yes, I did go to college. Still am in college, which is good. Still in college. Yes. So you haven't dropped out yet? Not yet, not awesome. yet. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, Gatia, why don't you share just a little bit about, uh, man, like what, what, what the youth ministries meant to you and, you know, all, all that good stuff. Uh, so I started, so when I went to college, I obviously wasn't in, I wasn't serving, but I came home for the summer and um, Pastor Mike was just like, hey, come to camp. And I was like, I don't know any of these students. I'm not really, don't really know the leader. So I was like, but okay. Like I loved going to camp growing up. So I was like, why not? Like, let me go as a leader and just see what the Lord does. Um, and so I went and I had sixth grade girls. So not only did they not know each other, but they, I, I didn't know them either. So it was like everyone, first time meeting, we're on the van awkward and we're like okay like who is everybody like trying to feel it out um and I was like okay God what are you gonna do because I don't know um and then we ended up it was so beautiful to see these girls like find a buddy and like that was their person for the week and then in small group just like open up to strangers really like this is the first time they're meeting each other meeting me um and that they felt safe enough to open up in that um and then the week ended up like three of them got saved and then like one of them even, I had the honor of being a part of baptizing her in the pool with Pastor Mike, and it was just, God moved in a way that I could never have imagined. Yeah, we, we, uh, we spent four days, four nights, five days in the beautiful beaches of Panama City Beach, Florida, but in the most rundown hotel, right, Tamara? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it said, it said it was a resort, and un unfortunately the categorization of what a resort means is very low. Um, but yeah, and so that was such an awesome time. And literally, um, one of the reasons why I threw Katya in with the middle school, because listen, youth ministry is built on middle school ministry. And, and it is so important that as, as, as times are changing, as everything around us is changing and adapting, that man, that these middle school kids need to know who Jesus is and who they are in Christ. And uh, man, listen, if you can make middle school, you can make it all the way to the top. And so, uh, yeah, it, it was awesome. But got to, so that was, that was last summer. And then I cried when you went off back to college um, because then you went away from us. But then you came back. And um, so now you're back home full time. Yes. And so how has jumping into youth ministry, f jumping back into young adults, even serving in kids? I mean, you guys saw her up here jumping. Like, she wears all the hats. <laughs> this, is, this is Katya, if you don't know her. And so... Um, how have you seen, like, God breathe life in you as you've just stepped out and been like, yes, Lord? Uh, well, first, when I came back, I knew that I couldn't just dive right into serving. I needed time to be filled because I, like, it's important not only to be emptying out yourself but filling up yourself. You can't, when you're empty, you can't keep filling, can't keep pouring out. Um, and so I spent time in young adults and connecting with community and was like, I need people. I need God-loving and fearing people. Um, and then I started, I was like, okay, Pastor Mike, like, I loved camp. Like, what else can I do? Um, and I dove in, and in that even met more people. So, and when I moved, we started attending, and it was, like, awkward just standing in the lobby. Like, I don't know anyone. Like, me and my sister would be like, okay, let's just talk to each other, pretend like we have a conversation going. And then we started serving, and I saw that, like, now I can recognize people. Oh, I serve with you in this. I serve with you in that. I go to small group with you in this um, and like have community now and I'm excited and I'm here like three days of the week all the time driving just to be with people um, and then serving you just you get to breathe life into the next generation. I, I loved my youth leader and that's why I wanted to be the same for 
like the girls in middle school and high school um, because I still look up to mine and yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like I think a lot of us in this room probably have that story about like, hey, when God met you, it was probably in a youth ministry somewhere, maybe it was at a summer camp. And this is why we believe so much in summer camp. And listen, uh, as inflation rises and the milk gets expensive, so does camp. And so, man, we are taking uh, 40 students to camp this summer. And um, yes. And, um, and if you have a chance to stick around, there's a QR code on the screen after service. You can find it. Man, help us get our kids to camp. It is not cheap. And these kids are working their butts off. They're, they're, they're taking on extra shifts at work. They're, they're, they're doing all the different fundraising to be able to get to camp. And listen, I love that we are a church that loves and supports the next generation. And uh, man, it's so important. And listen, as our team has continued to grow in youth ministry and, um, you know, you've jumped in. So we call small groups in, in Ocean Youth Crews because, you know, small groups is probably a boring term. And so we call them crews because, man, we want every student to find their crew and, and to find who are they going to be able to do life with. And uh, Katya, along with um, uh, a few of the leaders, lead our middle school girls crew. So how has that been? How has that been um, sitting in the awkward silence of, like, sixth, seventh graders that don't really want to open up and share, don't even know what to share. Um, one, how has crew time been? And then how, have, how has community and like connection with your other crew leaders, which, who are also young adults, been for you? Um, so one key moment when I think of crews is we were all sitting in like sixth and seventh and eighth graders. Love you guys, love you. Um, but they were just like a little shy to open up. And it's it starts with us as leaders, like, hey, I, this is what happened to me in middle school. This is what I went through. And they're like, oh, you're actually real. Like, you're not this, like, far away adult person that is perfect. Um, and so that really got them opening up. And then we had one time a girl share a heartbreaking, heartbreaking news. Um, and just in that moment, like, we were like, all right, let's all gather around her and pray. And you just see sixth graders, what are they, 10, 11 years old, like, coming around a, another girl and praying over her and and empowering her, and it was just a beautiful moment of like a young generation, like they, they have power too, and um, a relationship with Jesus, and to see that was just like so heartwarming and like encouraging. Um, and then with leaders, again, they're also young adult women, and I love them, Maddie and Ashley, like those are my girls. Um, and so like, wasn't super close with them before, and now like I get to even hear their stories within the small group. Um, and hear what they've been through, and then we talk afterwards amongst ourselves, like, and I, I don't know, I just love doing life with people, so. Yeah, yeah like, I had a similar story, so uh, Jamin, uh, Ryan, and myself, we led a middle school boys crew last season, um, and uh, we met at Culver's, and uh, man, we, 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 I know, it's amazing, um, and um, because, listen, I wanted to put a concrete mixer in every middle schooler's hand so that they're busy as I'm talking, you know, that way it's like, hey, Keep your hands to your concrete mixer, mix it good. And, uh, and I remember there was one time, and if Jamin's in the room, if he, like, like he knows exactly what I'm talking about. It was a moment where like they were wild. I think it was a Wednesday, they didn't, uh, it was a Monday night, they didn't have school, and so they were just ramped up. And I had a moment where I was like, I don't need this. This isn't for me. I'm asking for 10 minutes. I wasn't screaming, I was just being very <laughs> assertive. And, um, but, but it was such a breaking moment because you think sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, like, 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 like what do they, ha like, have they, have, have they even walked through life yet to even know that they need Jesus? Like, I'm sure, like, you probably feel that in your yes. middle school crew. And, um, and I remember right when I had that assertive moment, one, one of the kids goes like, well, I struggle with my um, feeling love because I'm adopted. And it was like, whoa. I mean, we're outside on the patio at uh, Culver's in Corkscrew Road, and people all around, and so I'm like, oh, and then I called out another kid that I knew was in a similar situation, I'm like, hey, can you speak life into him and tell him how, and, and like, when you begin to see the students rally around each other, it, it is such an incredible time, and so Katya is just one of the stories, and uh, I'm over time, and this service, we sync up with our Cape Coral campus, so they are loving me right now, so hey, there's some awesome stories within all of our next gen ministries that I want you to take a look at on the screens. My favorite thing about Ocean Kids is really how they just teach us more about God. All my friends and the people who teach, they're really nice, and they just help me like really get to know and be close to the Lord. There's toys. And there's also, there's a song that's a freeze dance. And we're learning about Jesus. 
before I went to youth, it was just like profanity would just come out of my mouth. It's just like my actions were just like not that great. Whenever I got involved in youth, like I've been listening to more worship music, I've been praising God more and just like bringing other people to youth and telling them about the gospel. I really like Ocean Youth a lot. It's very exciting. You get to meet a lot of new people. And then I love the leaders too. All the leaders are so all very welcoming. And it's not just like, oh, like a hi, hello, and then they never talk to you again. It's more like a, hey, let me get to know about your life. Let me get to be a part of that. Before coming here, I really was by myself. I don't have any family down here. Didn't really have a whole lot of friends. So once I started coming to YA, I started getting to know new people and just, I don't know, building a better community for myself. When I first started into young adults, I was welcomed with such open arms. Now that's all I want to do for others. I just want to welcome other people with the love of Christ. Now I've just become so bold in my faith and just want to show the love of Christ in everything that I do. Now that I've done youth and I've been more involved in the church, I feel like I want to read the Bible and I want to pray for people and I, I have a prayer journal now and stuff like that and I like to take notes when I'm in main service or when I'm in youth. I just like to have people around me and people to talk with and people to worship with and people to pray for. I've had nothing but great experiences. The friends I've made and how I've grown closer to God has just like been remarkable and awesome. It's just the best way for kids here at Ocean to learn more about God. So I pray for people at my school, like my art teacher. In any unknown period of my life, I lean into prayer and just bring anything to the Lord and surrender it all to Him. And every time that I'm having a rough time, I'll pray, talk to the Lord, talk to Jesus. Everybody has a different story to tell, but they're all there for the same reason. I love that so much. I love being around other like Christian youth. We want to see each other like grow as people. Community here has been great for that. Well, community and youth has helped a lot. Like even God says like you shouldn't do things alone. Like doing stuff with other people is so helpful. Don't be afraid to like, you know, show the true you at Ocean. They're the people who I can call my family. It's been real nice to have those men of accountability in my life now that when I am struggling, I can I can reach out to people. I think this community has pushed me more to pick up my cross every day and carry it, just like he did for us. It's so worth it to go, and it's just so much fun. I, I love Ocean Kids. Kids. Nope. Hey, there we go. Man, it's so good. Uh, I don't know if you caught that. But there, there was a statement in there about being your true self, Amen. being the true you. I don't, I don't know that I can encapsulate a, a better place that, that, that says this is, this is the calling that, that God calls us to. He calls us to be our true selves because that's what he can transform. He can't transform the fake you. He can't transform you trying to be somebody else, but he can transform you. And that's what transforms. That's what, that's what fills us and then goes, and, and it becomes this place of multiplication. We'll talk more about that today. I want to tell you a funny story. So uh, we need to welcome, man, there's a bunch of kids in here. What's up, guys? Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. I'm so happy you're here. Uh, before the service earlier, I was walking through kids ministry and just saying hi to volunteers in there. And, and there was a, a little girl that was with her grandparents and she realized all of a sudden that her class was going to be in main service today. And they were, they were, you know, trying to tell her and, and you can see she was starting to get upset and, the, and her grandpa said, Hey, it's okay. You're going to get to hear pastor Josh today. And she burst into tears. <laughs> was so upset. So I walked away and I just went and cried in the back for a while. And now, now here we go. <laughs> so we're going to have fun today. Let's do this. Kids, adults, everybody, let's put our hands like this in a posture of receiving. The God of the universe cares and loves so much that in, in the middle of it all and knowing every detail of our lives, he wants to speak. So Lord, right now, we posture ourselves to hear your voice. Lord, in Cape, online, in the room, you want to speak. And so God, we, we have our hands open 
And Lord, there's, a, there's an empty posture. Lord, we, we don't want to have, we don't want to be filled with other things. Lord, we want to be open to what you would say and what you want to speak to us today. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit who fills us and meets us. Lord, thank you that you are the source of truth and we can trust what you say about us. We worship you for it in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen, amen. amen. Praise God. Cape, I, I, I love, I was watching in the back there. What a great time, a baby dedication and, and worship together. Thank you for being with us today. Um, we're going to lean in and continue this series that we started last week. We're walking verse by verse through the book of Matthew. And so everyone, if you'll join me by either opening an app or um, opening your Bibles, let's go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. And I know we hit verse 1 last week, but, but we're going to talk about it some more. And I'm going to read through 17 verses here. And so stay with me. We're going to read them all, and uh, we'll see how it goes here. Matthew 1, verse 1 says, This is a record of the ancestors of Jesus the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Amminadab. Amminadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Solomon. Solomon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Now you have two women that are listed there in the genealogy of Jesus Christ that neither were Jewish. It's interesting. We'll come back to it. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was Bathsheba the widow of Uriah. Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the father of Abijah. Abijah was the father of Asa. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the father of Jehoram. Jehoram was the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham. Jotham was the father of Ahaz. Ahab was the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh was the father of Ammon. Ammon was the father of Josiah. Uh, Josiah was the, the father of Jeho Jehoiakim. Oh, man, he got me in the first service, too. <laughs> Jehoiachin, he just sticks his leg out and trips me every time. <laughs> Born at the time of exile to Babylon. Uh, after the Babylonian exile, Jehoiachin was the father of Sheatel. Sheatel was the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of Abided. Abided was the father of Elakim. Elakim was the father of Azor. Azor was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Achim, Achim the father of Elud, Elud was the father of Eleazar, Eleazar the father of Mathen, Mathen was the father of Jacob, Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, Mary gave birth to Jesus who is called the Messiah. All those listed above include 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the Babylonian exile, and 14 from the Babylonian exile to the Messiah. There we go. 17 verses. Thank you. Thank you for the encouragement. A lot of names there. So we, we talked last week that Matthew is writing and the intended audience is a Jewish audience. Matthew as a Jewish man is, is writing in a way where he wants his Jewish audience to see and unmistakably recognize that Jesus is the one that has been prophesied about, the one that all the way back that Moses pointed to, that we saw God pointing to in Genesis, and that the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah talked about, David pointed to in Psalms, and so that Jesus is the fulfillment. He is the Messiah. Now, Jesus Christ, Christ is not Jesus' last name. Kids didn't call Jesus Mr. Christ. Christ simply means the anointed one. It is the identifiable title of God's fulfillment, his plan of salvation for humanity. That's right. Amen. And so uh, I want to sit in this a little bit. Matthew, as I said, is he, he, his intended audience is a Jewish audience. And he says something, and we don't see it in the New Living Translation. That's usually where I, where I speak from. Uh, I like to read the New Living. It's a little more conversational and still a, still a good translation. But there's a, a piece that we miss at the beginning that we can pass by. 
And really, we can pass by it in, in all the translations because the, dr- the best translation that we have, it simply says uh, the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Uh, the New Living, it, it says this is the record of the ancestors of Jesus the Messiah, descendant of David and Abraham. And I want to talk, to, talk uh, first of all about th- this part, this word that, that at best in English is translated genealogy. But to Jewish ears, they would not have just read or heard genealogy. They would have heard this word that you and I are very familiar with. It is the word Genesis. And Matthew, in in a brilliant way, he begins. John does this, and John points back to the beginning as well. John does it in this beautiful poetic way where he says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Again, pointing the audience back to the beginning. Matthew does it this way when he says, this is the Genesis. But he says, of Jesus the Messiah. And the, the Jewish ears would have heard or read this and would have immediately been brought back to the book of Genesis. This place of origin, and it points us to this place. Matthew is saying what every human heart needs to hear, that there is a new beginning that God has made available through Jesus the Messiah. Yes, Lord. Thank you. New beginning. So they, they would have read that, heard that, and realized, oh, we're being pointed back to a place. And if you, you know about the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis it was written by, by someone who lived a little later. Does anyone know who wrote the book of Genesis? Who wrote the book of Genesis? Who, any, any kids in here know? Any kids in that were in first service that snuck into the second? No? It was Moses. So Moses wrote the book of Genesis. Now think about that. Moses, he, he lives years later, but his intended audience, Moses is writing to people that are coming out of 400 years of slavery. And he's telling them, hey, you're not aimless. You're not purposeless. You have a beginning that was ordained by the creator of the universe. Let me tell you about it. You didn't just happen. There is a value that is set on your life. You're not just an aimless, wandering people. You are a people created by God. Matthew, this is is where they would have went back, realizing Moses gave the book of Genesis so that, that, that hearts that only knew identity in slavery would know, oh, I don't have to live that way anymore. I'm now aware I've been a slave and an enslaved thinking and have have this culture in this inner pattern of my life that was built in by years of slavery and my ancestors being in years of slavery. And the God of the universe says, I'm not okay with you living that way anymore. I have a new beginning for you. you, Matthew says, hey, this has happened again. Every human heart needs to know you don't have to live in slavery any longer. You You don't have to operate in slave thinking. You don't have to operate in a way where as a slave of sin, there's a value system that I received. As As a person who isn't familiar and doesn't know that my identity is rooted and given to me by the creator of the universe who created me with purpose, Matthew says, hey, there's... This is the good news. There is a new beginning for you. you, It's found in Jesus, the Messiah. And so he he begins this way and says, hey, this is the new beginning. This is the new Genesis for you so that you know where you live from. God's people, they, they, they were familiar with this. They knew this from the, the way that they, they listened and the way that they took the, the message of Genesis and allowed that to, to reshape the thinking that they had had. And then we get into the names, and, and really we could go through every name. And, 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 and as I said last week, the names are here because every human heart needs to know Jew, Gentile have all been invited in to the story of Jesus Christ. 
All, all of us. And look, there's some ugly stuff in these names. So ugly that there is not a person born into this earth that would ever be able to say, I'm worse. I'm too bad to be included in God's story. This all was brought in. Now think about, let me, let me say it this way. So we, we can go into this, and so we, we have a new beginning, but it's not just that we have a new beginning. We have a new beginning, so we have a new identity. This is, this is the purpose. Matthew is pointing us to this, that this list of people have been invited, like you and I, to live with new identity. Thank you, Lord. Do, do you think Rahab is walking around in heaven right now with her head down? Is she up there going like, oh, I hope, I hope I, I don't get asked what I did on the earth? <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, man. I don't think I want to go to service today. I think I'll just go down to the, uh, the river of life and swim there. And <laughs> She's all good. She, she, she has no scars of former life <laughs> in eternity. Rahab's not up there going like, oh, I hope they don't know. No, 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 no. This is the freedom that we're invited to. Where Whatever has colored our past, there is a new beginning and a new identity in Jesus Christ. Amen. It's beautiful. Amen. If, you're, if you're taking notes, I want, I want you to write this down, and I want you to carry this with you. And I want you to, to ask yourself this question, and this is a question that I want you to sit in. It's not just like, Hey, I'm going to ask myself this question, and, and I'll move on. Well, th this is one that I want you to sit in and let the Lord speak to you about. How would God, the creator of the universe, introduce you to someone else? What, what would he say about you? Because once we get into that and we start thinking about that, there, there's these, these uh, lies that we live from that will start to be revealed. Because he's not going to introduce you from a job title. That's right. Come on. You know, if, if, if the Lord jumped in and stepped in and said, hey, uh, here, he, he introduced me to you, he's not going to say, hey, this is, a, this is Pastor Josh. He, he doesn't care about that. He does, he does not care. And yet so many of us, we can live, we're susceptible to live from identities that are based on what we do or what we've done. How do we know that? Well, we know that from so many NFL players, they finish their career and they got to retire at 30 something and they don't know what to do and they don't know who they are because their entire life, their value system and who they are has been built in what they have done athletically. Or we have a long career and we get to retirement and all of a sudden we have all this time Everything is built to this point. This is supposed to be the good years, and we're aimless and miserable going, oh, my gosh. Now what? And our wives are going, oh, my gosh, go back to work. <laughs> Listen, the God of the universe is not okay with you and I living out of a false identity. Amen. He wants you and I to know our true selves. What is the truest thing about you? What is the thing that you can look back in every season of life and know this is who God's created me to be? This is what it looks like for me to live and to be my true self. Because when we live in our true selves, fear doesn't get to, to be there with us. But if we live based on other people's opinions and other people's words that they've said about us, what we do, what we have, fear flourishes in those places. Then, then we hold on to our stuff like, oh, my gosh, I can't lose it. Oh, my gosh. Here, let me, let me, let me take it home. and here, I'll, I'll, I'll say it this way. Oh, my gosh, I'm a pastor. Okay, uh, so you guys got to think that Anna and I have a perfect marriage. <laughs> so we <laughs> and our kids, they just, they're well behaved. They were here the first service. And I was saying this, and I was saying, and, and our kids are well behaved, and all, like the quads were sitting on the front row, and they were just shaking their heads at me the whole time. 
And man, but we communicate this. We, we can. You know, like we got to that worship moment and, you know, where the kids came up and it was, that was so fun. That was so awesome. Well, my kids are over there and I'm like, just get up there. But they're kids, man. They don't care. Like, they, they don't care. <laughs> Baby dedication. So what? I want to melt down right now in front of all these people. What are you about to do about it? They don't care. But Anna and I are like, get out there. Worship. The people are watching. And then they're like, nope. And then, you know, parents, we threaten. We're like, just wait till we get home. Everyone. Oh, praise God, it's beautiful. I'm going to kill you. Like, oh. We do that. Anybody have pictures, like family pictures, that you look and you see just four smiles on? And you remember, like, the seconds before, you're like, smile right now. What what are we teaching our kids? Listen, there has to be freedom. If I live from the profile of what the world and people and even church world thinks, a pastor's got to be this way, where do I go to repent and confess my sin? Then I get locked in a box of fear of like, oh, I got to have it together. Like, man, what if, what if God wants me to, he, he, he makes me aware of mess in my life and, and, and I need to get that out. Listen, confession, write this down if you're taking notes. Confession is step one to discovering your true identity. Amen. Confession, step one. It is stepping into the fear of if someone else knew then it all falls apart. And what we find in the family of God and the grace of Jesus Christ is when we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. And not only does he forgive us, but he heals us. Stepping in. This is is how we find the identity that we've been created to live with. So many people, we, we don't know how to talk true self to true self. I was on the phone last night with, the, with a friend of mine from Minnesota, and he, he walked in to my dad's church, and I had only been there a little bit, like, man, the Lord was, was working in me, and I was still a hot mess, and, and, and I'm there, and, and he walks in, and, and he didn't look friendly, and he, he kind of, I was really put off by, by how he came in, and so, like, we laugh about it now, but we had a moment where we kind of sized each other up. I was like, are we going to fight right now? Like, I don't think I'm supposed to do that. I don't think that's what someone that works at a church does. But this guy's looking at me, and I haven't been saved that long. So <laughs> we'll see here. And, and, but we, we started talking. And he just said that he had, he had been driving around and, and just uh, saw the building and had never been in this building. So he just came in. And the longer that we talked, then he said, hey, I, I've been at the doctor. And he had all these scary symptoms going on in his life. And he left the doctor thinking by what they said that there was a good possibility that he had a tumor in his brain. And so he, he's driving around going, I, what am I going to do? Sees the building, walks in, and he and I start talking. Listen, I, I, I didn't have answers for him, but I knew who did. And so I didn't sit there and try to have it all together. I simply said, listen, can I pray with you? Because I know Jesus loves you, and I know that he's got a plan, and he's going to meet you in the middle of this. And so we, we prayed that moment. Listen, symptoms disappeared. Hallelujah. My dude started coming over to the house. Ann and I started, we, I was doing house projects, trying to finish my basement. He started helping me with that. He was an electrician. And so we started talking and, and working together and just, and it became this, this beautiful place 
of God meeting someone in a real way. See, when we, when we live from our true self, we become a safe place for other people to be their true Amen. selves. Amen. And if you want to know, listen, if you're single and you're, you want to know the most attractive, the, the thing that you can do to become the most attractive person to the opposite sex, it is to do this, live as your true self. If you're trying to posture and be a profile of what you think is attractive, man, you're going to be wore out. The worst case scenario is that you get married as that profile. Because then it's a bad surprise. And listen, there's going to be bad surprises anyway. Like this. And I can tell you all about that. <laughs> This is what Matthew is pointing us to, that there is a new identity that the God of the universe has for us. Do you know why David had to be installed, why why God had to, to orchestrate David as king of Israel? Why could Jesus not come through Saul? Saul was stuck in what I'll call it this way, imposter syndrome. Saul was stuck, just his identity was like, oh, uh, I, I've got people have to respect me. Oh, they, they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not respecting me enough. I, I, I've got to, got to step into places that, that, I, that I shouldn't step into and, and roles that, I, that God hasn't anointed me for or called me to do, but I've got to do that in order to please people, to keep people. What, what is he doing? He's, he's holding on to the things that, that God gave him. You, if you try to do this and control and orchestrate, right. you'll lose it. But when you live like this, Thank you, Lord. when you live like this, like I, I, don't, I don't have to fear. I don't have to fear not being the pastor at Ocean Church. That's not my identity. Yes. And actually, what the anointing of God, the presence of God, his purpose that, that he has for me flourishes when that fear is stepped through and I go like, I'm going to let it rip. I'm going to be me and I'm going to go for it. And in that place without fear, God meets us and we step into what he's called us to do. And all that fear, it can't stay. Listen, you're created to live that way. Amen. So what are the places, three places that, that if we do not receive our identity from the voice of God, there's three main places that we get it from. What we do or what we've done what others have said about us. And that one we can sit in for, for a while. And there's plenty of negative words that, that are spoken, but, but as we you talked about, even as an analogy of, of athletics, it doesn't have to be negative. Sometimes there, there's good things that are said about us, but, but aren't who God's called us to be and the identity that he's created us to live with. And we can take it like, i got to live that out. I've got to be that. So what others have said about us, and then this this third one, what we have. What we have, the stuff that we have, as if that really has a statement on the identity that the God of the universe knit and formed us together in our mother's womb with. Like, and we get attached to these things. Like, I, I have some moments, there's times where people come up to me in the lobby and they're like, hey, Pastor Josh, you got good shoe game. I'm like, why, thank you. I will not disagree with you. My favorite prayer request that came in, somebody wrote on a prayer request card, and, and put it in the offering container, and it said, how many pairs of shoes does Pastor Josh have? <laughs> so if you're here and you wrote that in there, I'll just, I'll answer, not enough. <laughs> I like buying shoes. <laughs> but we, we get susceptible to these things. We get susceptible to these things that, that what we have, all of a sudden, we find our identity in. Yeah. And the God of the universe is not okay with it. The reason I gave you confession is step one to, to, to finding and walking in the identity that you've been created with is so for so many of us, usually it's just the youngest kids 
They don't have a lot that they have to get rid of first to, to hear true identity. You and I, we've been, we've been picking up mess for a long time. And so as we begin to sit in these places, how would the God of the universe introduce me? What would he say about me? All the lies of the enemy, they, they, they have to fall away. Because the answer is, of that is not one that we would be defined by the mistakes that we've made. The God of the universe would not introduce Rahab. Jesus does not walk around heaven saying, hey, guys, this is Rahab. She's my great, great, great times 20 grandmother. Now, listen. Don't go too hard on her. She's, she's had some rough stuff in her life. She was a prostitute for a while. And, and No, 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 no. And yet we have the same view that we bring into ourselves, this, this shame-filled way that we think that God looks at us. And yet he has spoken. This is what he said about his people, who you and I are. This is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You're not like that. You're a chosen people. You're a royal priest, a holy nation. I think the God of the universe is saying this about you. Receive it. God's very own possession. He says, you're mine. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Listen, new beginnings, new identity, but here's the beautiful place. It's the same voice. It's the same voice, the God of the universe that spoke it all into existence wants to speak to your heart and tell you, this is what I've created you to be. Amen. Would you let go of these profile places? Would you let go of the, the, the lies that have been said about you? Right. Would you make some room for me to speak who you actually are? Come on. Here, here's the wonderful thing. It's for no other voice. And we get in these moments, and it, and it hits in these places where we're like... You mean I have to hear from God? I have to hear his voice? Yeah. Because you've been created to hear his voice. Right. It is a lie from the pit of hell that anyone at the sound of my voice, cape, online, in this room, would ever believe that you cannot hear God's voice. On, it's so good. He wants to speak to you. Amen. The same voice spoke this world, this universe into existence, wants to speak. He cares. He fit, formed you, mold, put you together in your mother's womb, and he has purpose that you're created to live with, identity that comes from his voice. Hallelujah. This is who he is. It's not insignificant that Matthew finishes these verses. And there are 14 fathers in the, in the, in the first section, 14 fathers in the second section. So up to David, 14 fathers. David to the Babylonian exile, 14 fathers. And Matthew records 13 fathers. In this last section, Matthew says it this way, Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Why, why, why does Matthew do that? So that every single person would hear the words of the gospel, that when we come to him, we get the same father. Amen. See, when our story is found in his, and our lives are submitted to his, then his father is our father. Amen. And that father wants you to know that, that you're not what other people have said that you are. You're not what you've done or what you're doing. You're not what you have. Even the good stuff. You know, I remember when Ann and I had the, had the quads, I had this moment where I'm like, this revelation moment where I'm like, man, I, 
I think I'm going to be known by this for the, <laughs> the rest of my life. I married Wonder Woman, and look what happens. And, and they're, they're like, honestly, I had a little panic, like, oh, I don't, I don't know that I, I want to. And, and we, we get to these places where we're, we're so concerned, like, how am I known? What is my identity found in? Every parent has to know it's a beautiful part, but your identity is not that you're a parent. That's not who you are. It's a wonderful outflow of God's work in your life. But he wants to speak to your heart. Let's make room for him today. Cape, if you'll bow your head and close your eyes. You in the room, do the same. If you're online, posture yourselves. I want us just to have a moment. What is God's Spirit speaking to you today? What, what are the things that, that need to be released? What are the things that need to be confessed? What, what are the false identities that, that you, you've lived from and you've grabbed onto? Whether it has come from things that you've done, things that people have said, what you have, what, what are those false identities? Today, let, let God's Spirit meet you. Let Him speak to you. For so many of us, it, 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 it starts with this. It starts with releasing, renouncing those places. We've got to make room for the Lord to speak what is true about us. And in order to do that, there's some lies that have to be let go. Holy Spirit, thank you for the way that, that you, by the purpose of the God of the universe, knit every single person together. And Lord, there is value that, that you speak, that you've created us to live from. So Lord, we just come to you today and we ask you, God, would you speak to us? Holy Spirit, show us the lies. Show us the places that need to be released. Lord, I pray that we respond to you without fear. We don't have to fear confession of sin. We don't have to fear confession of false identities and false self. Lord, we don't have to fear that. Because you've invited us into your story. And Lord, your story redeems, it strengthens, it brings us to who we have been created to be. God, I pray for courage in every heart to respond to what you are saying to them today. We worship you, Lord. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cape, I'm going to turn this back over to Pastor Jess. Love you so much. Would you join me in standing? I, I just want to encourage you to, to sit in this a little bit. Don't just let it be another Sunday and go about, like, sit in that. What, what does God, as your creator and the one that loves you, what does he want to free you from? What is fear trying to keep you bound in? And what does he have for you? What does it look like when you live fearless? That's what he has for you. Let him speak to you. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's worship him together.
Come on, what a powerful message today. I was just, uh, I was just saying that I'm like, I've never seen the genealogy preached like that. Like I typically skip over that in my Bible reading plan. So the Holy Spirit's telling me to read through these things a little bit better next time. Hey, I'm gonna invite our prayer partners up forward. Listen, one of the things that we say here at Ocean Church is that we want this to be the easiest place to receive prayer. And just as Pastor Josh mentioned, that confession is one of the first places into stepping into our new identity. And so listen, if you've got something that you've walked in with that you're carrying, listen, we want to be able to partner with you and pray with you. And so if that's you today, we encourage you to come on up and our team would love and have the honor and privilege to pray with you today. But everybody else, let me pray a blessing over us. God, we thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you're doing in each and every heart and life in this room and watching online. God, we pray, Lord, that you would be with us. God, as we go into our weeks, God, would your, would your spirit continue, God, to pour your grace and your mercy over your children. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you guys next week.